Welcome, uh, my name is Dr. George Machaki to uh, Introduction to Business course you take with me in conjunction with uh, uh, Blackboard Course Management System. Make sure you go into Blackboard and open up my concept map. So you, you will always have the second tier and then this uh, quick overview I'll have all the tiers. So you can always stop as we go forward. I'll try to keep this under uh, uh, 15 minutes. Okay, most of you will be doing a, a, what do you call it, a homework assignment that'll be looking at a different country. And when you're looking at a different country, try to find something about the culture, the country, something, you know, a lot of times as Americans, we upset people from different countries, not because we want to upset them, it's just that we do certain things that uh, are taboos in that culture. We just don't realize we're doing something wrong. So try to find that out and then have the dialogue within the forum talking back and forth. Okay, so why, let, let's go back into this chapter. It's uh, This uh, course is tied in with uh, organizational uh, introduction of business you're taking with me, um, either online or face-to-face. -face. Why trade? Well, you know, uh, it just makes sense. Same thing like in business. If I could get the price or a good someplace else less than what I could make it, why not? It makes sense. Or sometimes we don't have all the resources. If you look at Japan, uh, uh, they basically import everything. They don't have any uh, real natural resources or everything. They have to uh, uh, import uh, everything they need, all their uh, what do you call it, factors of production they have to import in. So you got natural resources, global competition, keep the prices down. The six billion uh, individuals in the U.S. is maybe like about five million or uh, 500 million, five million, 500 million versus to uh, one billion uh, uh, in India and one billion plus, uh, you know, one billion plus uh, five in India, one billion plus five in uh, China. So there's a lot of other customers that could buy our product. We could already only saturate ours. So it makes sense to trade from a business perspective. What do we buy our products like we're doing right now? Now because it's uh, a less expensive there or we sell our products there what's uh, happening now you're going to see that our products uh, even though the products may be less expensive in China but the quality isn't there so a lot of manufacturing or some uh, of the high-end uh, uh, manufacturing is coming back to the US where we're still known for our quality you pay a little bit more you pay for what you get what, what you get okay small businesses now what if you really look at small businesses we, as a small business most small businesses are just looking to survive and looking at their own uh, uh, economic area they live in. So if I'm living in uh, Grays Lake, or if I have a business in Palatine, or Wheeling, or uh, North Chicago, or wherever, Waukegan, Chicago, I'm still in, uh, only uh, thinking domestically. We should start be thinking of a small business owner globally. When I'm looking at globally, I'd like to have every country. What countries mirror or something that may need our product? Or what countries could I could buy my supplies to? That international aspect will reduce our costs, or if we can't saturate here because of the internet, we could sell our products overseas you know you have to worry about the exchange rates as long as they accept a uh, master excuse me MasterCard or Visa uh, the, uh, the exchange rate is all done by the, the banking industry for lack of uh, a better word then you had the bitcoins the bitcoins being accepted by a lot of other countries that's another way of uh, uh, selling your products overseas okay I'm not saying one way or the other it's something you have to think about it do not only think just domestically from the beginning you're taking this course, start thinking of an international component. If you have an international friend, how could I make that connection with him or her so I could either sell or buy my product? Some of you are international students. You're coming over here to learn how Americans think. You're already here. Set the seeds. Open up a business. Or uh, if you open up a business here, you have contacts back at your uh, in your uh, home country and vice versa, okay? What are some advantages? You can't make everything else. Comparative advantage. When you look at comparative advantage, absolutely. Comparative advantage... I basically, real quick, this is what you have to look at. I should basically uh, buy, uh, sell what I make the best and buy what I'm not as effective in. It's no different in business. That's why we do outsourcing. Absolute uh, advantages like Africa, Africa, South Africa, they basically have abundance of, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, diamonds. No matter what, they have the uh, majority of diamonds. So they could almost uh, set the prices they want because there's no one else that could beat them on the diamond. If you look at the oil, the OPEC, or if you look at the Middle East, it's be all the oil. Now the U.S. and other countries are doing, uh, uh, what do you call it, fracking. I'm not saying it's environmentally safe. I'm not, I'm just from business. But that's opening up another uh, revenue of oil. So now they have a choice between regular traditional oil or fracking oil or natural gas. And if everything else is going, so you have an alternative to, so now the prices start going now when you look at the free market okay so uh, they may not uh, no longer have that absolute advantage because there's other uh, uh, substitutes you know export we should know export basically what you have to look at the u.s we have to be uh, if you want a, a, a balance of uh, payments here let me jump real quick you know the difference between export means i'm selling something imports i'm 
bring something in. We're the largest of both. So if I'm looking to measure a uh, trade, you know, balance of trade, uh, trade uh, uh, surplus and trade deficit, all this makes a difference. If I am importing more, which is the U.S. is importing more and not exporting more uh, goods, or, uh, goods or services, basically we're going to have an imbalance. That means we owe more. We have more coming in. The way what you want to do from a business, you want to have that balance. Likely, I like to be exporting more and importing less. If you look at Germany, they're exporting 60% and 40% to importing. That's a good balance. So they always have, it's always in their favor. So they decide when should they import, when should they export, depending on the cost and the exchange rates, okay? So that's what you're looking at. It. We're the, the worst and everything else, balance of payments. We owe everybody favorable means that uh, we basically do more exporting uh, the, than importing. So uh, we have a favorable balance. Unfavorable, we're doing more importing than exporting. The problem with the U.S. is we started buying too much from outside and we uh, uh, started lacking in the manufacturing. You cannot be an economy just working on services and other services supplying services. You have to produce a tangible item even if it's a software and everything else we're losing our edge but now we're coming back for the quality but technology is in there so the new workforce now we can bring in from all over the world is what the, uh, if you're looking at the global it uh, it helps us not only buying our products but where do I get the workforce that could uh, take care of right now there's a shortage engineer so they have immigration rules if you have engineering degrees or if you have money to open up a business that could help stimulate the economy in here you will go ahead of the line if you look at getting your green card or a business card or or, or a path to citizenship. I'm talking to, not differently for the other thing when you're looking at immigration reform. Yeah, completely different issue. Okay, unfair practices. Make sure you know the difference between dumping. Dumping basically is if I'm looking to have a fair advantage. Is if I'm looking at dumping. If I look at China, some since China is an integral part of a lot of organizations. Chinese companies, they may be inadvertently or even advertently pushing money into them. Uh, uh, so when they're selling their products here in the U.S., I know China's right now manipulating, kind of it's not really the free market exchange, and that's where they're getting a lot of, you know, and we'll talk later on with the exchange rate, but something to look at. They're kind of still controlling their uh, uh, the currency uh, uh, against the global currency. Okay, but anyway, so they're actually helping the company uh, uh, make the product. So uh, without their help or without their assistance, the cost would be higher. So now they come to the U.S. and sell their products like steer or uh, anything else, ship it all the way from here, and it's lower than the U.S. could make it here uh, domestically. What happens after a while, the domestic product dwindles up and there's no longer domestic product, and then the, uh, the, uh, the what do you call it, the foreign product because it raises prices. And the only reason because it's a disadvantage is because the government is subsidizing it. If you look in a fair uh, free market, there's should be very little government subsidy and you know so if you look at that we do subsidize in the military and some of that stuff uh, like, like for Boeing we give a lot of you know we get a lot of uh, issues saying that we don't subsidize but in a way we do we subsidize for a lot of military um, technologies and advancement and everything else for Boeing but then Boeing also has another arm as a commercial so indirectly anything else we do in helping them to make a better engine making them a, a faster engine a smoother engine or whatever is transferred over into the commercial side so a lot of companies say yes United States of America, you are subsidizing indirectly, and so we have a disadvantage, so we're subsidizing directly. If I look at the European Union, they subsidize as part of their uh, process. They pay up front, but then the, uh, the companies will repay them later on. Okay, strategies to enter. Make sure you know these strategies. License is the easiest, and basically, if I'm looking for foreign, uh, direct investment is the hardest, because there's where I actually open up a business or a site. If you look at CDW here in Illinois, northern part of Illinois, it's a computer industry they open up a, a facility plant in uh, uh, Canada. Because they're not in the United States and they open up in Canada, they're a foreign direct investment in Canada, a plant there, a warehouse, they are now considered an uh, international organization. Okay, joint ventures, subsidies, you know, how do I get help? If I look at how, how do I get help, you've got the government agencies, you know I mean, you've got the exporting and trading, you'll find you've got sovereign wealth. You have like China, what they're going into a lot of times now, what they're doing is, 
if I look at Africa, and we're going to talk about Africa, America is also trying to get into Africa because we think Chinese are going to get the, uh, the foothold. They already had the foothold in there. When I look at the sovereign wealth, Africa has a lot of oil, a lot of uh, undeveloped resources that could be uh, well utilized within the manufacturing economy, where China is growing and the U.S. is there, but they may need some other type of resources for the technology, you know, uh, uh, for the print board and circuit board and everything else. Right now, China can uh, throw some of the inner uh, materials or metals that are there and Africa has it. So if we could get that, we could, uh, they have a competitor. Okay, but anyway, so what China's doing, they're going into uh, uh, South Africa and into the different uh, countries, uh, governments, and say, hey, we will build roads. We will build this. We will uh, uh, create the infrastructure, but we are guaranteed when we pull out the oil or the diamonds or whatever resources that we get 60% or 70% will go to our uh, to China at this price or whatever agreement they have. Sovereign so they already locked up their future potential for something now. It's almost like a, a leverage. You're leveraging this and they already have the agreement. So that's what they're doing for sovereign wealth. The issue with the sovereign wealth, uh, the money goes to the government. The government, in theory, when you look at the economic or the communist or socialist countries, they're supposed to take that resource, that money back, and give back to the other uh, uh, constituent. What's happening now, so you know, some countries do, some don't. What China's philosophy in the global Basically, is we don't care how you run the government. We have a business venture. So if you're uh, the human rights, and uh, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just their business uh, model going forward. We don't get involved in the governmental uh, issues, uh, how you manage your country. We're just having, uh, uh, we have a business uh, venture. Okay, but and, but we'll help you in the structure. The problem is when China is bringing in their people in for the infrastructure, they're using Chinese and using the local population for very menial type of work, but there's no strings attached. Ones to, except for the, uh, the claim on the natural resources. Now, the U.S., when we come in and we have something similar, we may have some kind of agreement and everything else, but the thing is, when we come in, we're looking at natural, we're looking at human rights uh, 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 issues, we're looking at a lot of other things, but when we put, so we put a lot of strings attached to the, con uh, to the governments for us to help, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, improve your factors of production that you learned in the last chapters, uh, you know, land, economy, uh, education, everything else. So we put uh, a lot of uh, uh, strings attached to it. But the things with the strings, we not only utilize, bring our expertise in, we develop and train and teach basically the local population so they could do it on their own. So you see the difference. China utilizes their own people, brings them in, so keeps the knowledge and everything else and keeps the other ones, uh, but no strings attached with the government. U.S. strings attached with the government and everything else. Uh, just our policy. I'm a business person. I could go one way or the other. Uh, I just want you to understand the, the difference for the sovereign wealth. So sovereign wealth is something else. Now, there's a big issue because China wants to buy some oil rights or some uh, 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 rights here in the U.S. That's the thing. If I got a contractual agreement and they say so much oil is going to go to China no longer because of the U.S., and that's a big issue that uh, is coming up. But, you know, uh, that's, be, uh, that's a legal thing. From a business perspective, I'm looking to work and buy and sell my products understand the rules and regulations. Okay, forces. I got two more minutes. Forces uh, attracting, uh, affecting uh, trade. You got different social cultures. You got legal uh, and regulatory. You have trade protection and you have to understand you have embargoes. You have import quotas, you have global e-commerce, physical environments, how do I bring the stuff in? Remember, we are getting some things from Asian countries that had some kind of a, a bug that was infecting our other things. We brought some fish in from the boats that are on there, and they're basically they're a, a species from another a, a region, and now they're infecting the home population. So there's a lot of other things. There's plus and minus. But when you're selling overseas, I can look at the culture. I have to look at the rules and regulation, and could I as a business work with the rules and the regulations and still maintain the rules and regulations as required by the U.S. government. Okay, so you got the legal concerns. If I look at this one here, there's no global legal system. The laws may be inconsistent. Corruption and bribery. The U.S. is, uh, you know, we're not, we're no angels. We're not the worst. So some countries, for anything to be done, I have to pay off. So a lot of times, what a lot of businesses will do, they'll hire agents and they'll do that inner working to get it done. You know, hopefully they don't know that they're paying off and doing any corruption, but just the way they move things is to work within our legal system. Okay? Okay, environmental issues, remember there's a lot of different environmental, there's child labor, there's pollution. Just because we contract out in a, in a developing um, economy and they have 
less rules and restriction for pollution, do we encourage it or, 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 or say, hey, just because you're there, let's do some pollution at least to meet our standards, or do we go by their standards? And that's the big issue when you look at social responsibility that we have in Chapter 2, also, uh, you know what I mean, with economic, but you also look at social responsibility to the world, to the global. All right, and then you look at trade agreements, and the ones that I want to make, I got one more minute, you've got the, uh, 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 the, the general trade agreement that works uh, with the world, the world trade. Uh, organization. They try to do the global mediation. You have NAFTA. Remember, NAFTA is the United States, Mexico. And NAFTA was basically created under President Clinton is to offset what they would think of the European Union when they were coming in. And what basically will happen now, it wasn't the European Union, China and the Asian market, India and everything else, they basically came in. So you may see NAFTA and the European Union basically working together against, not against, in, in conjunction to be the Western force against uh, um, what do you call Asian force for lack of a better word. You know, Mexico basically is uh, uh, you know, you know, the South American uh, alliances. So you have different kind of trade agreements that you have between different countries. Alright, so that takes care of the global. Uh, interesting chapter and remember whether you ever leave the United States or anything else, you have global employees, you have everything else. You have to start thinking domestically and global at the same time as a small, medium and large organization and you should do well. So this is chapter 3, Introduction to Business, uh, a course that you're taking with me online and we'll be, uh, uh, we'll have chapter 4, the, the next chapter is going to be uh, on that next. I'll see you in a few minutes and it's exactly 16 minutes.